Hey, how's it going everyone? Welcome back to the channel here. Today we're going to be talking about Sword Art Online Fractured Daydream. I know it's been a few years since I talked about Sword Art Online in general, even though I have it almost everything in my YouTube channel page and stuff. And I know I'm like kind of like a Sonic Tuber in sort of a sense. I mean, I don't want to think myself as a Sonic Tuber, even though I've made plenty of Sonic content in the past. But I do want to dive into Sword Art Online even more on the channel, especially now with Fractured Daydream, especially because it's more like a quote unquote MMO, even though it kind of really isn't. It just so happens to have co-op quests and battle raids now, which to be quite frank, this game came out on a left field. I'm not really sure why this was like a shadow drop out of a, like an announcement. No one saw this coming apparently, and it just so happened to show up in a Nintendo Direct. I was not expecting this game to be a thing at all because after last recollection, how that game ended and everything, it just... It didn't seem quite right to release a new one so soon, but honestly, I'm more than okay with it because I'm just craving for more sort of online content for gaming in general, and especially because this game is just so much fun. This game is actually created by Dimps, who actually created Fatal Bullet in the Gaming Verse series. And most of you know, if you're a Dragon Ball fan, they made Xenoverse 2 and Xenoverse and all the DLC expansions they made upon that. Or you're probably known best for Sonic 4 Episode 1 and 2. I mean, I don't make the rules here. But regardless, the game is just quite fun. And honestly, I wasn't really expecting that considering how the last few SEO games were, especially with Alization Licorice. I was not really a fan of that game i actually that game took me like four and a half years for me to actually like beat it because it was just so much of a drag and i just i couldn't really bear playing that game as i was playing with hollow realization but that's just more of a personal nitpick i mean a lot of people love alicization licorice and more power too i just couldn't love it as many other people could i did like last recollection and the game in combat was so much better but even that had its own drawbacks and stuff. I'm not gonna get into it in this video, but that's just how I feel with Licorice in general. I honestly think Lost Song is a better game, but that's a hot take and people are not ready for that conversation. But enough about that, let's talk about Fractured Daydream and how it actually improves on like, for example, Fatal Bullet, considering that this was made by Dimps. And let's just talk about it because I, I just love how this game functions and everything, but there are some problems and I do want to talk about those problems too because this game as of right now is not perfect. As for now, the closed beta, I had no connection problems. I, everything was so smooth. I didn't experience any lag or anything like that. I think that was fine. It felt, it felt good. Like unlike Jump Force all those years ago, which was pretty bad in my opinion. But the gameplay itself, it kind of functions like Fatal Bullet. It's not as like tight or anything. Characters now have weight to them, which I really do appreciate. Shinon is not so much, uh, you know, so fast. I mean, the only main characters I really tried was uh, Kirito, Shinon, and Lifa. And then I tried the Fairy King once, and that, that was pretty much it. I really didn't expand too much apart of that. I wanted to get more of the feel of the game and so forth. And I just let the other characters uh, do their own thing and wait for the final release. But I want to give you my full opinion about how I felt with these characters in general. I didn't play Lifa too much i think she was the least playable character that i did i played more of kirito and shinan i think they were both equal in my opinion of how much i played with them you do start off with kirito in the tutorial quest and it felt really good and didn't really feel too heavy on his character nothing felt really out of place it felt really smooth and silky and honestly i think it feels better than fatal bullet in my opinion the attacks feel smooth as butter. The lock-on is kind of weird, I'm not gonna lie. The camera can be finicky at times, especially when I was playing with Leafa and how the flight gauge is, how you can like fly and everything. Uh, it really fought against you and I really didn't appreciate that. I, I was fighting more of the camera than I am the enemy. So I really didn't like fly and attack that way. Overall, I think from what we had in Fatal Bullet of like the photon swords, the sword fighting is a lot better here than it was in Fatal Bullet, so I really do like that. And a little bit of the special skills or whatever, the uh, the sword skills or the advanced skills, whatever you want to call it. I call them sword skills because that's what I'm used to at this point. The advanced skills, yeah, it's kind of the same thing as Fatal Bullet, I'm not gonna lie. And a lot of the assets are reused from Fatal Bullet, which to me, I don't really mind at all. I think the graphics are a lot better than we had in Licorice and Last Week Collection, in my opinion. I love the graphics for Fatal Bullet, so I have no complaints here either. 
The only thing I do want to talk about but the advanced skills, like the sword skills for Kirito and uh, Leafa and a little bit of Shinon. Shinon's a little bit different because she's a, like a ranged character. But the sword skills for Kirito in particular, when you do like the horizontal square or the Volpal strike, it really, except for the Volpal strike, it really doesn't, uh, I don't know, connect with the attacks of the enemy. It kind of just lets you stay in place because what I was hoping and wondering if you can just fling in and then do the attack no like horizontal square you just stay in place and you do the attack and even when you're just doing like the regular normal attacks or heavy attacks it really doesn't pull you to the enemy and then you start attacking you have to be kind of like smart about what you're doing so what you have to really do most of the time is you have to jump forward by using the dodge button and then you attack with the square button and I, I, I'm playing on PS5 by the way. <laughs> so quite frankly you'd have to use the dodge feature and then leap yourself forward with the dodge and then you use the normal attack or heavy attack. And most of the time I actually did use the holding down the heavy attack because that actually flings you to the enemy with the Sonic Leap Sword skill, which is actually a cool reference there. And that's how you more or less get your magnetic quote unquote attacks in. And it was very strange at first because I'm so used to other games just pulling you in and doing the work for you. You actually have to work at it in this game, which was very, very weird. And I do want to let people know about that. And yeah, it's it's something. I mean, it, you, you get used to it. I, I get it. But when when you're first playing it and sometimes even many hours into the beta, I just kept making that same mistake because I'm just so used to it in other games. It's not that big of a deal, but I'm I feel like it would be a really annoyance to other players. So keep that in mind. What's cool about the advanced skills, you actually do get an awakening uh, at a certain point and it's pretty cool, especially with Kirito because he has like the yellow eyes and so forth, which I actually found out that's actually not a thing in the light novels. I, <laughs> I didn't know that. Apparently that's an anime thing, but it's brought in here. Um, I don't mind it apparently, but <laughs> what can you do? So the awakening skill, it levels up over time because you're leveling up in the process of doing like the co-op quest or even the battle raids, which I will get into in a second about how this leveling system works because it it's not a normal traditional leveling setup if you if you can understand that. Every time that you go into like a quest or a battle raid, your level starts up from level 1, then you have to work your way out to get to a certain level, like level 20, 25, etc. And then you can get your other sword skills, like Horizontal Square, Nightmare Rain, uh, War Pulse Strike, and so forth, and things like that. And eventually you'll get your Awakening skill, and that will bring you boosting up to whatever awakening you have like for kirito again he has the yellow eyes effect and then eventually you get your ultimate sword skill which was for kirito is the starbus stream which it looks fucking amazing in this game like i cannot lie i think this is the best looking SEO game we've had in so long in fact maybe ever because it's so one-to-one -one on the references and so forth and i really love that L last recollection kind of attempted this same effect not really i don't know um i i feel like with fractured daydream it really it it really feels like they're really trying to capitalize on the homage of everything of sao especially with einkrad which i do really appreciate it makes you feel like yes this is what we wanted this entire time with all the sao games and we're finally getting it it's just not how we expected it now this is the part where I really don't know the names of the attacks of this advanced skills for like Shinon and Leafa. I apologize if I get these wrong. I wanted to focus on the gameplay more than reading the actual names of the sword skills, so I do apologize in advance. But for Shinon, she has this little like grenade thing with her advanced skill when you press the square button with it. Uh, I didn't really like this one in particular because it was just a piss poor range and piss poor attack. I don't think I even caught anybody with it, with any of the enemies. I, I didn't like it and then with the triangle button she had this disco frisbee thing or whatever she threw. That was good at some occasions, I, I don't necessarily hate it. Um, 
it just kind of gives you uh, some breathing room in advance and it's just like okay i need some i need some breathing room as a sniper and stuff and then with the circle button you actually get this like negative energy thing where it pulls all the enemies in i think that was really interesting i've never seen that before i mean correct me if i'm wrong i mean it could have been from fiddle bullet for all i know and then her awakening is just a big ass sniper bullet that just aims at the enemy that you're aiming especially when using it on Elfang the Kobold Lord that's definitely a fucking need because that just takes a lot of damage from him I love that ultimate I mean honestly I think it's really cool now what she differs from Fatal Bullet into here is that you really can't crouch as you could in Fatal Bullet that's been limited to her awakening skill I say awakening because that's what it kind of is and then she can crouch down and stay still at a position and you basically zoom in as a sniper should. Then you can actually aim what you're looking for and the only thing is that I don't like about it is that you only get like five or so shots. I mean, you have to use these bullets as like if you really are going to use it. I just save it for the final boss. So if you know, the Cobalt Lord or even the Skull Reaper. That's what I usually use it for. I usually don't use it for anything else because there really is no need, especially with the ultimate for Shinon. I mean, come on, like, what else are you gonna use it for unless you're in a tight situation in the, you know, co-op quest. And then I didn't find out until very late into the beta was how to switch your weapons with Shinon. You actually have to hold down the triangle button to go from your sniper to your pistol. And that, could have saved my ass so many times because the whole time when I was just using her, I was just using the sniper and nothing else. I didn't know. Then again, I didn't look at the little guide thing that they give you at the beginning. And I don't know. I just want to test the beta and just have a feel for these characters. Like I said, that's kind of on me, but I found out by mistake. Last but not least, we do have Leafa that I tried out and she was the second least character that I used, to be honest, uh, besides the Fairy King. Uh, quite frankly, uh, the Fairy King is okay. Uh, it's not my style, uh, he felt. He didn't feel bad or anything. It just, it's not my style to be a mage. Uh, but with Leafa's support, which I do really appreciate that she has a healing ability because oh. sometimes I just need that healing ability and I don't really want to use my healing crystal. I do enjoy using Leafa, funny enough, and she's not even like my, my favorite character or anything. But I do appreciate how she handles as a support, but she's also a fighter, so uh, she's kind of like a mix of the two and I, I really do enjoy that. So she, I do see me using her a little bit more if uh, we get to the final release pretty soon. So with Leafa, she does have a few abilities, like for the first one, for the square button, she does this little upward attack where she actually goes into her flight gauge, which is pretty nice if you uh, are needing to like attack like a bat or something like that, or another flying enemy that you need to, you know, take down and so forth. That one's okay. Uh, I don't hate that one. It didn't feel clunky or anything. Like I said, the flying mechanic in this game during combat because of the camera, it just feels quite off. You're you're fighting the camera then you are fighting the enemy. So, I really didn't enjoy using the flight mechanic as like fighting. But for the flying itself, I think it was a lot better than it was in Lost Song and you know, Excel World versus SAO. So I think the flying is a lot better in general, but I do kind of find it weird that it's limited to a flight gauge, uh, especially because in canon, uh, they got rid of the flight gauge, but I, I don't know if it's before then. I don't know, They're, the story could explain it. I have no idea. As of now, we have the flight gauge, so you're very limited on the flying to begin with, so you gotta use it really wisely. If it were me, and I did this in the beta as well, I use the flight gauge just to fly around quickly as I can to get the objectives done and fight my enemies on my own. But other than that, the flying with the combat, I, I just didn't care for. Now with the triangle button, you do get some hack and slash attack. I, I don't know what the name is, I apologize, but I can't look it up at, the, at this point in time because I didn't really look at it. But <laughs> but you do this hack and slash attack and it's, it's pretty cool. I, I, I do enjoy that. It's kind of like a uh, horizontal square in a way or nightmare rain in this game. Uh, so I kind of look at it as Leafa's own version of that. It's pretty unique uh, to her anyway, because she doesn't have the dual blades. She only has the single handed sword. I do appreciate how she can be on the offensive, but she can also heal at the same time, which I'll get to in a second right now. 
with the circle button. She can actually heal all your teammates and it'll just heal your allies within due time. It's not a big chunk of health at first, but as time progresses, you'll get more and more health as long as you don't get hit. Now with her awakening, she does get the speedaholic, which I, I do remember that one. And I didn't really get to use this one. I didn't really have a chance to use it before the beta ended. But as from what I saw, she is quickly and very fast. Like she is a demon on steroids. Like it is fucking insane. I don't have that much footage because I only saw a few glimpses of her being in that state before the boss got defeated and the beta ended. I don't have that much experience with the speedaholic ability, but from what I saw firsthand, I mean, it's gonna be a thrill using Leafa. Like I said, I was not expecting to like Leafa that much in the beta, and I am glad to be proven wrong. And with her ultimate ability, she gets this giant tornado she summons with her spell, and it is a godsend to use in the Kobold Lord because it just does a lot of damage. For the co-op quest, you do kind of experience this semi-open world vibe that you and other players are experiencing at the same time. And quite frankly, the only floors that I really got to see was floor 22 and a little bit of floor 19. I actually got to saw the grave of Griselda, which was crazy. That's a huge reference that I never thought I'd fucking see in an SAO game. And pretty much what you do on these maps, you just kind of explore at your own leisure with your team and you just take down enemies and level up for the final boss and rinse and repeat to the next. And once everyone gets to the main part of the map, which you'll be teleported at the very end after you complete objectives, you do have to try to open up the teleport gate, but you have to beat all these different monsters with other teams and try to survive at your own leisure and try to get as much experience as you can. Now while you're exploring, you're actually going to be leveling up as you fight along enemies, like I said. Every time that you start up a brand new like quest or even a boss raid, you actually start up from level 1 and then you have to defeat enemies and level up to actually compete with the final boss at the very end. And throughout the entire journey of going through these quests and defeating enemies, you'll actually unlock treasure chests from defeating a horde of enemies at some points. And you actually get these little mod things where you can increase your speed by 30% or increase your max damage or your critical damage, your critical rate, your health, your flight gauge, etc. And there are some rare ones, which I had a few times. It, it's, it's very rare to actually get a very rare mod. And at one point, I actually got a Ragu Rabbit. I want peace. And once you're high enough of a level and everyone defeats the little like mini bosses at the very end of the teleport gate, which was just big monsters spawning left and right and you just have to survive. Then you go fight off the final boss for Cold War Lord and that's pretty much it. Let's see who gets the last attack bonus and that's about it. I never got the last attack bonus even though I think I did many times. I just never landed that fucking last attack bonus. Now with the boss raids is a little bit different but it's kind of like the same idea. You're in the floor boss of the Skull Reaper at least here in the beta and you just try to survive all of his attacks and it can get pretty insane because you're just in this one big ass circle and you're just fighting enemies left and right because they just spawn in with the Skull Reaper along with the Cobalt Lord and you're just trying to survive and try to get as many healing things as you can leveling up at the same time because like I said when you actually spawn into one of these quests or boss raids you're actually at level 1 so when you actually go up to fight Skull Reaper you're actually at level 1 and you have no sword skills whatsoever. It's basically like a rinse and repeat at least along with the beta. The beta was very not so it is repetitive but every time that i went back in it felt like a new experience each time only because there was just so many things that you could try to to use especially with the rewards that you're given with like your ranking your items and your appraisal items your enhancing items or dismantling items there was a lot going in especially when you wanted to just level up a certain character like for me, it was Kirito. I wanted to level up as much as I can. I got to like rank 14 or something like that. And even then, even me ranking up that high, I felt like I was really no match. 
and I was having fun the whole time. I didn't get bored a single fucking moment. You know what? That was pretty rare for me in an SEO game. A lot of the times I felt really bored with <laughs> Licorice. Licorice was just a boring game to me. Last Recollection had some moments that were just eh, it could be better, I could be having fun right now, but uh, I'm, I'm just hitting all these HP sponges of enemies, it's just... Last Recollection has a little bit more issues than I like it to, but it doesn't have as many issues with Licorice. Yes, I just, I don't, I don't fucking like Licorice, alright? <laughs> Except for the DLC, the DLC for Licorice was just mm mm mm, it's better than the base game. But honestly, Fractured Daydream, I really didn't get bored with the game, even though it was just the same thing over and over with the closed beta. And looking at this lobby menu, it it kind of does seem that they're going to be pushing microtransactions. I would not be surprised if they did that with, you know, battle passes and seasons and more cosmetics. And, and God forbid they're going to release, like, you know, limited items from, like, I don't know, the game verse or releasing characters behind like the dlc paywall like for example let's say like rain or philia uh you could only buy her like for five bucks a dlc i can see that happening i don't know i mean we'll have to see more and more when the game comes out um but like i said i really didn't have any issues with the game in general you know except for the fact this happened <laughs> Well, I hope you guys enjoyed about this little video about Fractured Daydream and uh, I kind of went off on a tangent on a few of the things, but hopefully I covered everything. This video was not really so much scripted, it was just me thinking about all the times I was having fun and so forth, so I hope I got everything and everything's in place, so I hope hope you all uh, got a feel of what I was feeling about this game in particular. Like I said, this game has a lot of potential and I really do hope that Dimps and, and Bandai don't fuck this game up because this could be the best SEO game that we could ever have. I, I, it has the potential of passing Hollow Realization and a lot of my friends know I love that fucking game. And I know, Hollow Realization is just the reskin of Final Fantasy 14, which I am playing a lot of recently, and if you guys want to do see a live stream at some point, and then yes, I, I gotta live stream Sonic Adventure at one of these days, I I know, I, I can already hear the screaming. <laughs> and if you did play the Fractured Daydream Close Beta, if you got lucky enough to get a code, let me know in the comments below and tell me what was your experience with Fractured Daydream. I'd love to know your thoughts and what you experienced that I didn't experience, like with Argo or or Eggio or again the Fairy King that I really had no chance of using because I only used them once. Uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts and if you made it to the end of this video, comment hashtag Sora Online Fractured Daydream Day 1 and I'll heart your comment. Alright with that being said, again thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Stay cool.